So we're sitting here with Jordan Rudis Who's at that? the, uh, well that's you. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Town, New York, at the Music Hall, and uh, you're going to be performing Explorations. I am. And uh, so let's uh, just tell us a little bit about what's going on tonight. Tonight is a really uh, interesting night on many levels. Um, you know, it's going to be an adventurous evening. We've got all kinds of stuff going on. One thing, as you mentioned, we're going to be performing this new piece that I wrote. Uh, it's called Explorations for Keyboard and Orchestra. Uh, but instead of the orchestra tonight, we're doing a two-piano arrangement. And actually, the fellow who um, orchestrated and then conducted the world premiere of it is with us. He, his name is Aaron Basburg. Uh, he's from Turkey. He came uh, especially to, uh, to do this concert with me. So that's going to be kind of a, a cool thing. So he managed to take the whole orchestration and to bring it into a keyboard arrangement. He's, uh, the interesting thing about Aaron is he is a, an 18-year-old prodigy genius guy who I met online, actually, through the magic of the internet and YouTube. I discovered him because he was conducting an orchestra that he assembled uh, in Ankara, Turkey, of his friends, doing an entire Dream Theater album with an arrangement that he made himself. So it really caught my ear, and we, we uh, kind of connected, and uh, kind of one thing led to another, and I wrote this piece, and he orchestrated it, and came and we premiered it in Venezuela, and now we're actually doing a premiere of it really in the U.S. Uh, for this two keyboard arrangement. So that's one element of the concert tonight. Um, we're also very lucky because uh, James Labrie, my singer from Dream Theater, is in town. Um, we're recording you know, a new album, and he is going to join us for some songs tonight as well. So that's a whole little section of the, uh, of the performance tonight. And then on top of that, there's more, which is that I have some friends from Israel in. I connected with um, a really, really great producer uh, whose name is uh, Eyal Amir, and, and he is uh, from Israel, and, and their project is called the RNL Project. And uh, we did this really cool video online where we focused it on iPad music stuff, and Eyal wrote a really cool song. And I did all this video playing and recorded everything at my house in the U.S. He did all his things and worked with some other musicians in Israel, sent him all the files, put it together, and put something online about a week and a half ago, and it's already about 60,000 hits. So um, Eyal and Ray, the singer of the project, uh, decided to come join us here in New York, and we're going to actually perform the song uh, called Another One tonight, and, uh, and we're also going to do another song called Wake, which, um, which is on YouTube as well. It's really cool. Actually, Ray, the singer of the RNL project, did a completely a cappella version online. It's awesome. But tonight we're doing more of an orchestral sound with three keyboardists. Myself, Aaron, and Ayal will play it with Ray singing. So, yeah, those elements, plus I'll do some solo stuff, have some fun playing myself, and it's going to be an awesome night. So it's just kind of a Jordan Rudess extravaganza. Yeah, Jordan Rudess and his friends' experience. It's very cool. Fantastic. And then you recently did a um, a thing online. It was the uh, was it the mind meld? Yeah, right, right. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. The mind meld. Yeah, well, um, I connected with this incredible drummer whose name is Marco Miniman. Marco is uh, you know just one of the world's most spectacular. Um, musician drummers and uh, we connected I knew about Marco for a while and I always wanted to work with him but recently we had auditions um, for the Dream Theater drumming gig and Marco came down and I met him there and I was really blown away with his playing I thought he was just, I just related to where he was coming from I thought he was just spectacular so you know we've been looking for an opportunity to do something and the idea of, of um, doing this very unique project online with a company called Band Crashers came up. And what that is, is it's a service. Band Crashers offers, offers a service where they can uh, prepare an internet broadcast where the person can sit at home, the user can sit at home, and actually choose between different angles and watch whatever you know part of the performance they want to. And they can, still, you know, it's a streaming service. So the concept is you go and you pay, I think it's like $5. And you can watch the show live. 
and you can also stream it at any point afterwards. So, um, yeah, so it's very cool. So Marco and I got together with a fantastic uh, young guitarist named Daniel Jakubovic, and the three of us got together and had a fantastic jam and a great time, and uh, let a lot of notes fly. And it happened in Chicago at my friend's uh, studio called Planet Ten Studios. And the um, the recordings for that that's online. You can download that and listen to yeah, that if you uh, missed the mind meld. Yeah, you just go to bandcrashers.com and you can check it out. Mind musical mind meld. Great. And then you so you said that you were holding uh, auditions for the drum the drumming gig for Dream Theater. I did. Have you guys uh, chosen a new drummer for Dream Theater? We did. But we did. There's no information yet. No information online. No, I'm telling everybody to just chill out and the information will come when the time is uh, the right time. There's many different levels, of course, to, to announcing this. It gets deeper than most people know, but, uh, you know, it's going to be fun to announce when we can, and uh, all is well in Dream Theater land. Great. So is there um, plans for a new Progressive Nation tour coming on? Or No, not at all. Not yet? No. No plan for that. But we're just, you know, we're just starting to go into, we're starting to write stuff in the studio, working on some cool stuff. Playing around, just getting the feel for it. Yeah, writing. Got to happen first. Definitely. So, did you um, did you guys know the drummer that you selected previously, or? You know what? I, I think I'll just leave that subject alone. Right? All right then. Not a problem. So, uh, you uh, recently um, put out an iPad app uh, called MorphWiz. Yeah, um, I've been having a lot of fun with the whole you know iOS, iPad, iPhone um, thing. It, it's become a big part of my life. Uh, not that long ago, I met somebody who I felt like I could really work with. He's a programmer, a really creative programmer, and we decided to kind of invest a bunch of time into making, um, well, uh, iPad apps in particular. We made a music one called MorphWiz, and MorphWiz has been doing very well. Um, it just won the Billboard Award uh, for Best Music Creation. Uh, I've been in San Francisco numerous times over the last few months just kind of like, you know, working with the app and showing the, the community, you know, what's going on with it. And it's, uh, there's a lot of people out there in the world today playing MorphWiz. The cool thing about MorphWiz is that it offers a very unique combination of mu uh, music and visual. I really try to bring those two worlds together. And that's what the whole thing about it is. That was the goal and the purpose of this uh, App. And the cool part about it is that, you know, where most music apps are, you know, small versions of things or toys, MorphWiz actually kind of is unique in that it's a, new, a, a really um, intelligent way to kind of make expressive music with these new devices. And people are responding to it that way because they realize, oh my God, this is really a new way to make music. You can really express a musical phrase in a way that you couldn't really do before, you know, on, on anything, so... It's definitely, I mean, it's very expansive. I mean, you can pretty much play with it in any different way yeah, you can do all for cool hours and hours and hours. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. I mean, I think we, you know, just create, we took a lot of time. We had a good vision. We stayed true to it. We didn't release it until we felt it was right. There was no rush. It's not our main business. We wanted to, you know, something we wanted to create out of just passion for what we do and the music and the technology, and that's what happened. And then there's actually some uh, MorphWiz playing around uh, tonight at the show, right? Yeah, there will be. Exactly. There'll be some MorphWiz playing around. Got some, uh, some sounds programmed in so I can do a little jamming. And... Great. So uh, could you take a, a little time and, and show us yeah, how, to, yeah. how it works and play Absolutely. around with it a little bit? Yes, I can. I'll be happy to. Francisco. So yeah, here we are in front of MorphWiz. This is my creation. Um, you can see that every patch you go to, first of all, can have a completely different look, which is kind of cool. So whether you're playing something really spacey, or, you know, just a real kind of sound, then... But what's interesting, uh, one of the things, as we get started with this, is that the cool... Uh, part of MorphWiz is that every time your finger goes down, it's really an independent musical event. In other words, like if you notice with this sound, Beyond Gravity, if you press it down here, it's very pitch pure, right? You play it up here. So then anywhere in between is going to also be, you know, modified and the synthesis is going to morph. That's what we call MorphWiz. So if you go from down here, but 
unlike a traditional synthesizer, you can have one finger playing here and one over there playing that other sound, right? And one here. So what that does is if you're playing a more traditional sound, as we watch the wizard fly by, I play just the right number of notes, we'll play something uh, on this sound. You can, you know, always have your finger on the kind of the pulse of the expression of the sound because you're controlling, at the very minimum, controlling pitch and controlling amplitude. And in this sound, we're also controlling a little bit of the synthesis. That's why it gets a little thicker. But like just as an example, I can go in very easily to the synthesis and say that I want to put it on FM synthesis and I want to just add a little bit. And we're putting it on the vertical grid. We'll do that much. And then when I play, watch. So again, every note is independent. So like I can hold this note, top note here, shake it pitch-wise and be bringing that one down there and maybe hold that left hand there and bend this and so I can slide some notes and not others. Right. So we'll also notice that every time I hit a note, there is a visual thing that happens. And the, the basics of it are that I assigned each waveform that's possible in MorphWiz to an image. So in this particular sound, uh, at the bottom of the screen, it's playing a sine wave. And this is the image that I assigned to a sine wave. And that morphs into a triangle wave, right? And that morphs into a sawtooth wave, which finally, at the top, is a square wave. So every note, again, is totally independent. And it'll show you the last note played basically. So, um, and of course we turned on a little bit of synthesis, so if we turn that off we can maybe hear the pure waveforms. And you'll notice, so that's happening. So even though there are only four waveforms that we're dealing with, this is kind of cool, we look at waves. Here are the four waveforms, if you can see down here. And you can choose like a bottom waveform and a top waveform or anywhere in between the waveforms to start. And that's the cool thing about MorphWiz is that we kind of keep this concept of morphing between the waveforms, both uh, in the audio domain and also visually. So uh, that's where it kind of gets cool. So and the other thing, that it has a very, um, very smart way of dealing with pitches. Let's go to the sound for a second. So notice that we're sliding around, right? Here we are sliding. But if I just land on different notes, as I'm touching, it's pretty much in tune, definite notes. It even tells you what the notes are. But the fact that I'm able to go to slide around like that, but also play individual notes is part of the magic. Uh, so let's go here for a second. Go to our controls, put the pitch button on the screen, put the octaves, and you can decide what you want on the screen. Now I've got octaves, so... Right? So... All right, so you can also have it on lock pitch. So as you're sliding, it doesn't exactly slide between the pitches. But here's the thing. It's got two different things going on. One is that you can round the initial notes. So when your finger lands, whether it's left or right of a particular grid line, it will play exactly an A. It doesn't matter if I'm left or right of it, but as soon as I, as soon as I slide away from it, it'll smoothly go to the next note. And the real cool part is that when you slide, let's say I go from A to E, when I stop my finger on E after the slide, it'll go, okay, it'll either move me to the right or left, or just in case I hit it right on the line, it'll stay very close. So like... So you notice it always is perfectly in tune. So if you imagine like a violinist who's, you know, playing a note and they slide to another pitch, you know how kind of painful that can be sometimes if it's like an amateur violinist. It takes years and years to master that. So my feeling was that, you know, most people want to play in tune. They want to play a note. They want to move to another note. They want to add vibrato. They want to go on that. That makes music a little bit easier to, musicality a little bit easier to come to.
And people could argue that point. Like, oh, you're making it too easy. But I feel like, you know, offering, using technology to offer people, to offer, you know, the, the society, you know, the ability to make music, to make it sound really nice, is a great thing. Even if it's a little, little bit easier. It doesn't mean they're going to, you know, be competition for, like, some, you know, professional musician. It just means they can have a tool and they can... You know, really enjoy music and spreading the, uh, you know, the beauty of music around and offering something that plays in tune, I think is just a really, you know, wonderful thing to do. That's, um, you know, that's part of what I'm about. I want people to enjoy music. I think it will make for a better world. And if I can offer uh, something that lets people play a little bit more in tune, then, uh, you know, I'm happy. Fantastic. Well, cool. thanks for uh, showing us Morphwiz and taking time out with us. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you, man. Have a great show. Is the... Um, is the explorations going to be recorded? For download. Well, we are going to record. Of course, it's a live show. You know, so I'll have the option to either use it or not. We'll see what happens. But if it doesn't get, you know, if it doesn't get recorded tonight uh, in a way that is um, something I want to release, I'll certainly you know, make it available it's, uh, when the time is right. Fantastic. Well, and have a great show. Thank you very much. And thanks Good again. The speaker is awesome. Thanks for let me check it out. Yeah, no problem.